Beautiful day, the clouds are partying in the distance there. Welcome back everybody, David Shepard here on the Humble Hot Shot channel with another mechanic video for you guys. Today we're gonna to be installing a gooseneck hitch on this 2015 Dodge Ram 2500 back here. So I'm gonna show you the truck, I'm gonna show you what hitch the customer went with, and I'm also gonna show you how to install that hitch all right after a word of scripture. So today I wanna to share Romans 10 verse nine, which says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's an incredibly important verse, basically laying out the way to salvation. And that is through faith in Jesus, confessing your faith in Jesus and truly believing that God raised him from the dead, which makes eternal life a reality, life beyond this world and beyond the here and now a reality for each of us if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. So thanks for listening, guys. Love each and every one of you. If you ever have questions about salvation or anything at all, my email is always down in the description of all the videos. So feel free to reach out. And now I'm going to show you our victim here for the day. Like I said, it's this 2015 Dodge Ram 2500. This belongs to a local... Um, local contractor here in the valley who just purchased himself a gooseneck dump trailer and therefore he's going to need the gooseneck hitch installed in it so we're doing the installation today and at my recommendation and that of others he went with the b and w kit so really like these hitches i've had great luck with b and w i've installed a few in the past mostly on third gen dodges um but fourth gen is actually even easier this truck actually has basically a gooseneck prep kit. So I'm gonna show you how that works, show you how this hitch gets installed, and basically give you, first give you a layout of the parts. This is kind of your bread and butter, your main center section, they call it. So that's the big center section, obviously holds your two and five sixteenths ball, gooseneck ball. And on this model, since it has the prep kit, it's really just installed with four main bolts through your frame cross member. You can see big grade eight bolts there. So not, uh, not terribly complicated with this prep kit. Of course, you do have to drill five holes in the bed. You don't have to drill any holes in the frame, but you have to drill a three and a half inch hole for the gooseneck ball, of course. So that's your main hole. And then also four smaller holes for your safety chain loop. So I'll show you guys that when we get to it, but Right now I'm gonna show you what's required to um, basically prep the way and just make some access underneath the truck to install this. So you can see down here, we've got, well, first of all, you can see we've got the spare tire removed. I do recommend doing that. It gives you a lot more room to work down there. And of course it's easy enough. So remove your spare tire. And then this is optional, but I do recommend removing the fender liners if your truck has them. So. Both side fender liners, it's gonna make it a lot easier. They're held on with 11 of these little eight millimeter bolts, 11 of them on each side. I've got the other one just draped over my tire there. Um, but I do recommend removing those. And then also this big heat shield that protects, uh, goes in between the exhaust and the spare tire. That is held on with four 10 millimeter bolts. So basically that clears the way and we did get started on this already. I actually already drilled the main hole, the big uh, three and a half inch hole in this case. They're usually either three and a half or four inch, excuse me, depending on your gooseneck kit. So this one was three and a half. You can see we got our hole saw out, um, but I'll show you how that works. They give you this little piece of angle iron that acts as a template. So we'll go up underneath the truck here. Hopefully I'll be able to see, but that is your gooseneck prep kit in this truck. So you can see this big center section here, this big steel plate is sort of already in place. So all you do is, a little difficult with one hand of course, but all you do is stick that up in the round hole that's already there, kind of sets right in there. You push this up flush to the bed and you mark that center hole. You drill a quarter inch pilot hole from the bottom and then you move up top and drill your large three and a half inch hole. So like I said, we already drilled it on this truck, but it's just as simple as that with this little template and get my shadow out of the way. Customer wanted to rust proof uh, just where I drilled through the bed and all he had was green paint. So 
he's definitely a function over form guy, so don't roast me for that. I wish I had some black paint with me, but he didn't care. He went and sprayed that for rust proofing, so probably a good idea. And that is how you set your template and drill the main hole. So once you have that hole drilled through, there is a spa uh, excuse me a plastic spacer block that goes in between that steel plate and your bed. I assume it just keeps any vibration from those two metals touching. So all you do is wedge that plastic spacer block in there and then you move on to installing this center section. Like I said, this is kind of the, the main piece of the gooseneck kit, obviously. So as I said before, it installs with these four bolts, but you have to fish, you have to fish this through there so these nuts are welded onto this, um, basically this big L bracket handle. So I'm gonna show you guys, it's probably the trickiest part of this whole install, but you put this with the flat side facing down. So this will be the driver's side and it's a little difficult, but you basically fish it in between the frame rail, and watch out for any wiring, in between the frame rail and that center section up underneath. So actually, already installed the other side uh, that L bracket that is and since I am working by myself what I did was just used a bunch of electrical tape to tape this in place once I got it exactly where I needed it so like I said that's about the trickiest part of this whole install is just fishing those through it's a tight space in there and getting them lined up to where you could get these main bolts installed. So I'll slide back underneath and show you guys the passenger side that I've already got in place. Oh. Okay, so holes are already through there and you just have to fish that bracket, like I said, in between this prep kit and the bottom of the bed. So since that is taped in place, might be hard for you guys to see, but should be able to just thread these bolts right in. Yep. So, as you can see, that's right where we need it. I'll go ahead and thread the other one in as well. That's going to be a little difficult with one hand, but you can see where that one goes as well. Obviously, they go through that center section. So that's gonna be our next step. I'm definitely gonna need both hands to lift this heavy center section in place and then get those two bolts installed on each side and I'll catch up with you guys after that. All right, guys, got the center section installed there, as you could see, nicely centered. Boy, I don't like that green paint, but hey, not my truck, not my decision there, but got that center section installed. I'll show you underneath. It is a bit of a bear, pretty heavy section to lift up in there and then just getting it perfectly positioned to put those four 5 8 bolts in. A little difficult, especially by yourself, but finally got it in there. I'll show you guys underneath. Here is that center section all bolted up. Here are two of your 5 8 bolts and the others are kind of tucked up there above the exhaust. This truck does have a larger exhaust, certainly doesn't help, but you could remove that one hanger and I used a pry bar to kind of get that out of my way and be able to access those bolts up in there. And that's about all there is to that. You do tighten these to 150 foot pounds. So you want to get, those are obviously your main bolts that hold everything together. So want to get those nicely torqued down. And then uh, you do want to watch this brake line assembly. Of course, you've got your two brake lines and all your ABS lines as well. So you got to make sure that's not going to rub on anything. So I'm actually going to end up bending that bracket down a little bit. And I think I'm going to try to tweak this bracket on the axle over this way a little bit just to get some clearance, especially when you invert that goose ball and stick it down from the top. So center sections in next step is to install the latch pin assembly or the latch handle assembly. So bolts onto here. I'll show you the bracket, a couple bolts to bolt kind of an offset bracket on there. It's this piece right here. Get you a good look at that. So four bolts to install that kind of offsets it away from the frame. And then you bolt on your actual handle assembly, which will come out through the driver's side fender well here. 
and that's how you'll be able to access to um, release and or lock the gooseneck ball. So we're gonna get that all assembled and show you guys in a minute. All right guys, moving ahead on this gooseneck install. You saw we got the center section in and all torqued down, all four bolts. So after that, the next step is to install the latch pin handle mechanism. So this is what you'll actually pull on, like I said, from the driver's side fender well, fender well there to latch or unlatch your gooseneck ball. So one thing to note here, it's pretty self-explanatory. The long handle bolts to this side of the bracket and then two more carriage bolts to bolt it to the mechanism up underneath the truck. However, one thing to note here is these instructions from B&W are incorrect. So if you look here, it shows the bracket curved towards you, if you will, and the handle flipped up. I installed it this way, and if you do that, it will make, it will make this part stick upward, that little tab on the end stick up and not really fit in the fender well. All the ones I've seen show your handle flipped down coming out of the fender like that. And if you look at the sticker they have you install, it actually shows it that way. It shows that little tab turned downward um, so you could operate it better. So if you install it the way they tell you to, it's gonna be inverted and opposite of the way that it shows in the sticker. So the directions on the sticker do not correspond. So keep that in mind, you're gonna want this flipped the opposite way of what they show you and then it'll be facing the correct way when it pokes out the fender well so two bolts there these are 916 nuts and uh, two more to go underneath I'll show you how this goes there's a little bit of a trick to fish this through so I'll just show you guys best way I found to do it it's gonna attach I got one bolt just lightly installed here but it's gonna attach with those two bolts there so Best way I've found is to come behind these brake lines up above the fuel tank. Let's see if I can do it one handed. And then you kind of just have to feel and fish your way through there. Yep. There we go. So you just kind of fish it through the end of the frame and then it will. There we go it will install onto your latch pin mechanism underneath just like so. So just rest that there for a minute, show you guys what it looks like coming through the fender. You can see just below the bed and just above the frame rail and got to bolt it up of course, but the tab is now turned downward as it should be and as it's shown on the operation sticker. So just a note there, I'm gonna get those bolts tightened down, get that handle installed and uh, catch back up with you on getting close to the final steps here still got to install the safety chain loops that's kind of the last step aside from putting your fender liners and stuff back together and they do give you a nice guide for that so catch back up with you guys in a second all right guys next step on installing this gooseneck hitch after you get your latch pin or yeah latch handle all installed through the fender well here you can see that operates, pulls out, and towards the cab, basically locks it in the open position to drop your ball in, and then you move it to the rear. This one's a little stiff yet, but move it to the rear and slide it in for your locked, latched position. So, a little bit of powder coat and stuff on that mechanism, probably just needs to scuff in a little. But after that, your next step is to install these U-bolts for your safety chain loops. So. Come up in the truck bed here and I know my shadow is in the way here but actually with your latch pin in like you just saw me do you go ahead and drop the, the ball in and thankfully B&W gives you this nice safety chain U-bolt drill guide so all you do is drop the ball in there slip the guide over top and just kind of square it up between your bed corrugations mark those holes we're using a 1384 kit for a three quarter ton. If you're a one ton, you'd be on this holes, but mark your holes and drill them out. These four, you're actually drilling through the bed and then through that big cross member gooseneck prep kit as well. So these four actually proved to be a lot more difficult to drill than the big three and a half inch hole that's just going through the truck bed itself. So 
get those drilled out, use plenty of oil, of course, and then you could go ahead and drop your U-bolts in. I did have to, I did have to just um, go a little bit larger. They say a half inch hole for these U-bolts, and I was looking for a nice tight fit, but just because you're going through the bed and then through that cross member as well, if there's any slight misalignment, these don't want to slide through easily. So just to make that a little more easily, a little more easy, I did step it up one size on the drill bit and now these slide through nice and easily. And go ahead and step down here. Once they're drilled, drop your U-bolts through as you saw. And then to put the spring tension on them, they give you these conical springs here. So basically you're just gonna put these on each of the U-bolts, one on each threaded end, and then tighten your lock nut underneath. So that basically keeps that spring tension so that when you pull up on those, you can latch your safety chain and then they pop back down flush with the bed. So pretty self-explanatory there. Just gonna slide those springs on and tighten the nuts down. And then that is basically it. That will, uh, that will complete the gooseneck install. Of course, we've got to put our fender wells and heat shield as well as the spare tire back in. And then they give you those stickers for, for the end user. So I'm gonna button up here, get everything tightened up, torqued down, and I'll show you guys the finished product. There you have it guys, as you can see, gooseneck ball all installed safety chain loops with the springs are in there and if you come over to your driver's side fender fender well here you could see there's the lever operation so pull out on that sucker to unlatch it slide it towards the cab and it remains out and then reverse the process slide it to the rear and push it in to latch that ball so there you have it guys gooseneck hitch install on a 2015 ram gave you my tips and tricks that i learned along the way hopefully that's helpful to you guys i will say it is a bit of a bear lifting that center section in by yourself and getting everything aligned just a lot of trips out from underneath the truck back up up into the truck bed so if you have an extra set of hands that would definitely be preferred but Otherwise, those are about all the tips I would share with you guys. I would definitely, they say it's optional, but I would definitely remove your spare tire for sure. Got a lot more room to work and also remove both fender liners as you saw me do. Gives you a lot better access and just a lot better line of sight when you're lining all the bolts under there. So other than that and the one note in the B&W installation with that, uh, they, them telling you to install that handle upside down. Other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory. The directions are good aside from that one point. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope this helps some of you. And uh, God bless you guys. Put your faith in Jesus, and you will have eternal life. Amen.